which is a free app. They have got absolutely anything you can think of in terms of guided meditations. Um, and I like using some of those. Um, I do also create my own meditations. Okay. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Welcome to Mamwa. I am Gordy Camp, your host, and this is the podcast that includes you into my most famous song lyrics. He's a middle-aged man with an attitude, and he didn't even have one till he met you. That's right, I'm the middle-aged man, and my attitude will chatter us through all things that I'm passionate about, from spirituality, the gym and fitness, food, traveling, and music or movies. Quick disclaimer, this list is not exhaustive. So you can get on or you can get off and join us for the episodes that you like the sounds of. Dip in or dip out, as long as you keep dipping. Either way, we've got something to say and we're going in three, two, one to start us today with home workouts and then the next, hypnotherapy and animal reiki. I think I might be cured of my chocolate addiction by the end of this episode, folks. So hello and welcome to Mamwa. And uh, today, as always, we do believe in empowering individuals to take control of their fitness and well-being from the comfort of their lives and their homes. I am your host, Gordy Camp, and today we will be discussing hypnotherapy, animal reiki, spirituality, and the freedom and positive approach to some home workouts with Anne Hall. So welcome to the show, Anne. Thank you. Great to have you with us today. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. So good to see you. So, like, just a bit of background for the listeners and viewers, if you're watching this. Like, Anne and I actually met through um, Beachbody and some home workouts. We're part of an accountability group together. Um, So, as part of the whole fitness and well-being side of the podcast, just Anne and I, years ago, I think we're looking at about 10 years ago, maybe, Anne and I met Mm, online. Yeah. And then we like were part of the beach body business and we were working on home workouts and yeah, it was it's so great and positive and that's kind of the basis of my home workout journey, to be fair. Um so and firstly, is working out still a main priority in your life or has it changed over the years? It absolutely is. Um now I'm having to like tailor it because of uh, the wonderful uh, phase I'm in with the being in menopause. So obviously the energy I had back when we first met obviously isn't the same as it is now. So, but it's all about tailoring it and fitting it in it and kind of amending it to what suits me now. Um, but it is absolutely part of my daily routine. For sure. Yeah. And bro, like, is it, do you try and work out every day? How is that affected? Like going through menopause, there's probably quite a lot of people who, who listen or watch and they might be going through that journey as well. So how and how has it impacted? How did you adapt to that? Yeah, I find that doing high impact um, isn't quite as suitable as it was. So I, I modify um, but I'd still do, I still exercise daily. My morning routine, I tend to go for like a half hour walk okay. just to like first thing in the morning before work to get my mindset right, focus on being present and like get some exercise in before I start work. Um, I fit in exercise during my lunch breaks. So if I'm in the office, that means kind of going for a short walk or if I'm at home, I can fit in a short workout. Um, so like a 10, 20 minute workout. Um, I also mix it up a bit. So I do sea swimming. Okay. Because sea swimming is, is a really great mood booster and it's also good for my joints and for, for the hot flushes. <laughs> it really does help with that. Um, I also do Nordic walking. Okay. So I have the, what kind of looks like ski poles. Uh, that's really good for toning and conditioning your body. So I try and do a variety of exercises um, to fit in with what I've got on during the day. Because you live by the sea, don't you? Yeah, yeah is I it? live in wonderful Cornwall. Cornwall, amazing. <laughs> so you've got loads of hills as well mm. for in order to walk in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So being in the sea, if what would how does that differ from the effect it would have going to a, a swim pool, for example? How does sea swimming kind of impact you differently? I think for me, like being in the sea, um, A, it's a lot colder than the swimming pool, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, um, 
so it's it's taught me like how to regulate my breathing better okay because that's um I, i've been sea swimming for about two years now um and when i started i really had to like instead of like you know starting to hyperventilate i had to like take it really slow and like so that you know because it's a shock yeah. if you're not used to it um but my you know i've learned to regulate my breathing um once i'm in the sea it's kind of like everything else just goes because you're focusing on your breathing you're focusing on what you're doing so any mind chatter there's no room for it because mm -hmm. you just have to focus on what you're doing and i find that it's it's almost like a mindfulness practice because you just kind of you're at one with the sea and you're just enjoying the moment and it's it's just amazing absolutely amazing so for you know for anyone who hasn't tried it uh definitely recommend it it's really helped me with like my mindset um it's helped me like i said with regulating my breathing it's helped me with my menopausal symptoms it's had such great benefit um if i've had a bad day and i go sea swimming as soon as i get out of the sea it's like the endorphins kick in and you have like this feel good feeling like for the rest of the day yeah. really and so i imagine it's absolutely fantastic i imagine i don't know if you know that if you know much about this because i don't but i imagine being sort of like having the salt water the minerals within the water i imagine yeah. it's much better for you than yeah swimming in all that chlorine nonsense oh. um i know there's a lot of rubbish in the sea as well but like yeah there's also a lot more natural min minerals and stuff so i would imagine yeah i mean yeah by all means if md does know correct me <laughs> <laughs> but just yeah Enough. And of course, like, you know, there's the, especially where I live, there's the added benefit of, you know, you get to see the wildlife, the seabirds, the, yeah. you know, the marine animals. And it's, yeah, it's just lovely being in that environment. There's quite a few sea lions around Cornwall as well, isn't there? Yeah, there's there's a lot of seals. There's, you know, we get dolphins and um, so it's... So now and again, yeah, you get an wonderful. accidental hug from a seal. <laughs> You're just well, <laughs> Hasn't happened yet, but you never know. <laughs> um, oh, that's brilliant. Um, so with your training then, how do you organize your training to make, because you're obviously a very busy woman, um, as we'll get into with everything you've got going on. How do you organize yourself to make sure you do manage to train at the same time as all that life stuff that gets in the way as well? I'll, I'll make it part of my non-negotiables, as I call them. Yeah. Um, so the, the walk first thing. It's like, yeah, it's it's on my. That's like the first thing I do before I even do anything else. Before breakfast, before anything. Well, feeding the cats comes first. Yeah. But after after that, it's my walk. Um, and one of my cats like to join me on my walk, so he's kind of more like a dog than a cat. I tend to, I tend to go walkies, and then he runs to the door, and then we go, we go for a walk. Yeah. Don't say it too loud. My dog might hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that's that's kind of like the first thing on my list uh, because it gives me that boost in the morning um, and I'll have a look and see what I've got on during the day I can usually always fit in a short workout during my lunchtime when I work from home yeah um, and if I have to be in the office I can go for walks throughout the day um, you know shorter walks and weekends, I can set aside time for longer workouts. So that's when I tend to go for my long walks um, using my Nordic walking technique to get a proper full body workout in. And, you know, I make sure to add some weights in as well, because of, of the older you get, it's important to have, you know, to maintain your, your muscles and, you know, bone density. So, yeah. you know, weights are important for me to do that. So I just, yeah, exercise is like a non-negotiable. You know, I wouldn't not do it. Mm -hmm. You know, unless I'm unless I'm ill, yeah. obviously. But um, I always fit it in in my day. I always make sure to find time, and you know, you don't have to do like hours. You know, pockets of time will, yeah. you know, is is more than adequate. And it all adds up, it, doesn't it? It absolutely yeah. does. Yeah. Is there anyone specific that you follow to kind of motivate you in some different areas? I do like some of the coaches from from Beachbody. Okay, yeah. Like I, I, I do have favourites. Tony Horton being like the main one because um, I liked his like hardcore 
a workout session because it was short. It's like 22 minutes. Yeah. Um, uh, Sean T is another one with his short workouts, like the 20 minute ones, the step workouts. Uh, so those are like the two main ones um, that I really enjoy. Um, I like their style. I like their techniques. Um, and yeah, there's not really any like other main ones um, that, that I follow as such. Yeah, I still follow Shanti. Um, yeah, because he's always working on something. I just, I'm always fascinated by what workout is going to come out next. Yeah, yeah, he's he's motivating for sure. <laughs> and uh, what about nutrition then? Like, how do you sustain your the, the training with nutrition habits? What have you got in place? Um, I tend I try to have as balanced a diet as possible. Um, so mainly like a Mediterranean style diet. Um, a lot of fish, a lot of chicken. Um, you know, doesn't mean that I don't treat myself. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean like cutting everything out. Um, I think as long as you have like a balanced diet and everything in moderation. Um, I don't drink, so you know that that doesn't kind of fall into it. Um, but yeah, you know, I do like the odd treats now and again. Um, but on the whole, as long as I make sure to maintain like a balanced diet, which I have been doing for like like the past seven odd years. Um, I tend to go for a, a low carb uh, meal plan, which I've been sticking to for, yeah, for quite a few years now. And that seems to be working in maintaining uh, the weight. Yeah, brilliant. As we move on then, by taking a positive approach to home workouts, you can set yourself up for success, as we know. Um, we embrace the many benefits of exercising in your own space, if you are working from home as well. From increased motivation and focus to the ability to tell your workouts to your specific goals and preferences, this allows for opportunities for further growth and progress our limits. And instead of viewing home workouts as a chore or a burden, we can consider them as, let's say, an opportunity to challenge yourself. You can improve your physical and mental health, as we've discussed, and you can discover new ways to move and strengthen your body. So with the right attitude and the right mindset, you can transform your home workout routines into a fulfilling and rewarding experience that brings you closer to achieving your wellness goals. So we've spoke already about wellness then. Um, what about spirituality? What mindset habits do you promote within your own life then? Um, um, I, I'm a huge advocate for practicing gratitude, uh, practicing mindfulness, meditation. Um, I always incorporate that in my daily routine. Uh, usually when, when I finish my morning walk, I do a 10-minute meditation. And I think the walk combined with the meditation just really calms you and it kind of helps helps your mind stay calm and present. Um, so that's that's kind of like my go-to. And do you, do you have like a guided meditation or are, are you kind of set in your meditation practice and you just put some music on and drift off to focus on what your meditation is for that day? How does it work? Yeah, I do. I do a bit of both. Um, I like using guided meditations. I have my favorites that I use. Okay. Um, um, I have an app called Insight Timer, which is a brilliant app, that, which is a free app. that have got absolutely anything you can think of in terms of guided meditations. Um, and I like using some of those. Um, I do also create my own meditations. Okay. Um, I have a YouTube channel, which... Um, I've recently started where I've posted um, some guided meditations and also some guided um, hypnotherapy med meditations. So I tend to use a combination of both. Um, other times I tend to just put on relaxing music and meditate to that. So it kind of depends on what I want to do in the day. But it's it's always one one form of meditation or another. Yeah. So we'll get into your hypnotherapy in a quick second. But tell us a bit about um, your spiritual belief then, like without getting too much into a religious conversation, um, <laughs> like I, I tried to avoid in one of my previous episodes. Um, but what kind of what's your basis? What do you what what's your practice? What's your spiritual practice? Well, for me, it's um, I'm all about 
like holistic therapies. Okay. So for me, it's it's Reiki mm-hmm. and the belief in the universal life life force energy. Um, so I'm not really because Reiki doesn't fall within the religion, um, and I'm, I wouldn't say I'm religious as such, but I'm very much like an advocate for complementary and holistic therapies. So I would say like my belief that lies within those therapies because I have seen, you know, and experienced the benefits of, of using those. Yeah, very similar. Like, I, we had an episode just recently um, that we recorded about like universal energy and it did touch on things like, like uh, law of attraction and like putting the correct energy out into the universe to, to attract more of what you want and, achieving more of what you what you're putting in um so yeah that's i mean i'm all i'm with you on that one just as we develop then um for the listeners whether you are new to self-care or in wellness or whether you're looking to revamp your existing routine do remember to approach each session with a positive mindset and a sense of freedom that allows you to truly thrive and succeed now we will move into hypnotherapy and human and animal reiki um, as we're going to talk about Anne. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that this is a form of alternative therapy that focuses on promoting healing, relaxation of humans and animals through the use of energy, like we've discussed. This technique comes from the traditional Japanese practice of Reiki, which I have heard of, so I'm not completely in the dark about that. Um, but I've never had it, so I do have quite a lot of questions for you. I believe it involves the laying of hands to channel energies, promote healing in the bodies. Um, And you will obviously have a lot more details on this as a Reiki master for sure. Um, Reiki practitioners are trained to use their hands gently to channel energy into human and animal's body, depends on the practice. And that, from what I can gather, promotes a sense of calmness and balance. And this can actually help to relieve stress, reduce anxiety and support both the human or the animal's overall well-being. Um, so to start then, Anne, how long have you been doing hypnotherapy and Reiki? Did it start together or did it kind of did it gradually progress over time? Um, I started uh, Reiki first. So I became a Reiki master in 2022. And I find both modalities fit really well together. Yeah, I think like with with Reiki, you can use hypnotherapy uh, when you do a session. Okay. So you can com- you can combine both. Uh, the way I do Reiki, um, I tend to do distance Reiki rather than in person because obviously energy isn't confined to one room. Energy is is flowing. Yeah. Um, so it's you know it doesn't matter where the the client is because Reiki knows where it needs to go. What are the what are the benefits then of having that that practice, that Reiki practice, um as a human firstly? Yeah, so for the benefits for humans is um general overall well being. It can help you relax if you're feeling stressed. It can help with pain management. It can help with with your mood. It it's um, yeah. It can help if you're feeling anxious or depressed. You know, if if you're recovering from surgery, it's. I mean, the benefits are numerous. Yeah, and I can imagine if your hypnosis um, at the same time as the reiki, then I can, I can understand how that would work hand in hand with animal reiki. How do we know, firstly, if our animals need it, is my first question. With animals, it may be that there are sudden behavioral changes. Okay. It could be signs of physical discomfort. It could be emotional stress. It could be that they've had surgery um, or had some kind of trauma. It could be that they're because animals are attuned to energy so it could be you know if if your animal is particularly sensitive to energy uh reiki would definitely be of benefit um but that that's 
kind of just like some examples of when you may notice that they need it. But I always stress that before you consider anything like Reiki or other complementary therapists, obviously check with your vet first. Yeah. Um, because they can it can work very well in combination with if if your animal is on medication, then Reiki can can work very well with that mm-hmm. because Reiki is non-invasive. It's Reiki can't do any harm. Whenever I use energy, I always focus on sending it with um, the intention of providing healing, and I'm always sending it with the uh, always send always kind of have a mantra in my head that I'm sending it and sending healing energy and love to the animal. Mm-hmm. It's obviously going to be quite difficult for animals to tell us how yeah. when they need something like this. Um, but if we as humans are going for it and we want hypnotherapy or Reiki, what time scales do they normally expect to feel a difference? Do they go in and expect like one hour session, I should feel something different or are they, are they very open to saying, well, this is going to take some time. What's the, how, how do you gauge what they expect really? Um, from Reiki. Well, from either hypnotherapy or oh, okay, Reiki. Yeah. yeah. So Reiki, you usually feel it when you have the session. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people uh, tend to fall asleep because they get really relaxed. Or other people notice, you know, that ten- the, they're not as tense as they were beforehand. They're more relaxed. Like they may have had, you know, the, some have reported like less pain afterwards. Um, generally feeling a lot better. Um it can help them with sleep uh, for in terms of hypnotherapy. Um, it's provided them with like a, almost like tools to help them shift their mindset, um, you know, more confidence, mm-hmm. uh, less stressed. Um, it, it depends on, you know, what they come to me for. Do you expect an immediate result or, or not? Um, it, yeah, it all depends on the issue. Okay. I mean, I've had sessions where, you know, in an hour, it, the the issue got resolved. Yeah. Um, but others, it can be maybe one session. It can be maybe three or four, uh, depending on what they want to work through. Mm-hmm. But uh, the results that some of them have had is, for example, freedom from sugar addiction. You know, the the mindset shifts. Uh, more confidence, more self-belief. It's, you know, help with like visualizing goals, um, help with procrastination. Yeah. So it's it's a kind of wide variety of, of results depending on, you know, what what they would like help with. Yeah, and I bet that's really difficult for you because like I know myself from healing that when you're doing this, you're, the the energy has to go somewhere and it yeah. predominantly goes to the person giving the treatment whilst they can take it away and deal with the let's say negative energies or the unwanted energies. Um so how how do you heal yourself? Um I use self hypnosis. Mm-hmm. Um I use Reiki on myself. Um I have techniques to I kind of have a technique to brush away any like negative energy and are kind of visualizing the negative energy being transformed or transmuted into white light Mm -hmm. so um i mean when i deliver my reiki sessions i i feel really relaxed um and the same when i do the hypnotherapy for clients i get relaxed when i see them relaxing yeah um so it kind of benefits both me and the client so it can become an all-in-one process that yeah. as you're going through it, you're healing yourself and discarding exactly. of it. Yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So you've answered quite a few of my questions. So what prompted the animal Reiki um, from the human side of it? How did that come about? I've always had a strong affinity with animals Okay. for as long as I can remember, ever since I was young. And I've always found it easy to connect with animals. Yeah. Um, and I did um, I did a five-day kind of Reiki experience um, a few years back. 
And I thought, oh, that's quite interesting. So it was kind of like in the back of my mind for years while I was kind of veering off track and trying different things that didn't really align with what I want, what I felt truly passionate about. Okay. And it was kind of when I had that aha moment and I thought, oh, yeah, I should do Reiki for animals. And yeah, and, and that's when it started. So it's, I've always been interested in, in healing. I've used crystals for probably over 20 years now. Yeah, the, the kind of healing modalities I've always been I've always been fascinated by and I was interested in. It's just taken me a long time to realize that that's what I actually want to do. And now that I'm doing it, it's yeah, it's amazing. And it's it it really feels like, you know, when you say like finding your soul yeah, passion and and your true calling and this is what I feel is definitely my true calling. And was there many adaptations between the Reiki you were doing already from to when you started doing animal reiki as well no because um animal reiki is reiki okay um because the universal energy is the same it's only that reiki in itself um you know reiki for humans have been around for over 100 years yeah whereas animal reiki has only recently gained popularity because people have noticed the benefits of you know the benefits that animals have experienced yeah, yeah. um i mean some of the some of the animals i've treated um you know I've, I've treated a dog with neurological issues who had um a, aggression especially around food so they would find it difficult trying to remove the food bowl from him because he used to be you know he used to be quite protective of his food yeah, yeah. Um, so I did a Reiki session for him and after the Reiki session, they were able to just take the food bowl and, you know, without any issues. I've treated things like feral cats who, um, struggled socializing and, you know, their behavior improved after receiving Reiki and, you know, whereas the owners couldn't, um, really stroke them properly mm -hmm. after the Reiki session, they were even able to touch the stomach um so it's you know it can have amazing transformative results um because animals are really susceptible to reiki and animals like reiki yeah um i, I know my cats do they, they absolutely love it um so it's it can be used to heal a variety of or help heal a variety of different ailments um yeah. you know there's been you know Reiki can also be used at end of life to make the animal more comfortable. Yeah, it's you know it's never an easy decision as as owners to to take that decision. Yeah. But I feel if we can help in some way to to help our pets be more comfortable at that stage, um, that's you know that that's kind of kind of that's going to give a sense of. I suppose it can help with like closure for yourself as well yeah. as your pet. Um, and, you know, it, it is hard when, you know, when you're an animal lover and, but it's, I know it's kind of, it's going to help them. Yeah. And whatever I can do to kind of help an animal feel calmer and feel more at ease. Yeah. I think it's um, fascinating. So yeah. what's some of the, his, like, what's the history behind animal Reiki? Like how did, how did Reiki, the practice of Reiki, do you know, come about towards animals as well? A few practitioners who uh, who also did like animal communication. Okay. Um, I think they kind of came across um, Reiki as well um, because those two areas are also quite quite closely linked. Yeah. Um, because with with the animal Reiki, you do establish like a connection with the animal even though I'm not physically there with it um the way I the way I do my distance healing is that I use a picture of the animal and I connect with the animal that way and it's you know it might sound a bit like woo woo and out there but um it's you really do because it's I can kind of sense where they need the Reiki to go yeah and Reiki doesn't just work on that during that session. It continues to work afterwards. You know, it continues to work for days because 
the energy kind of moves around the body mm-hmm. and goes where it needs to go. And the, all that time, the animal will benefit from it. And um, I think it's there isn't really any documented um, evidence when they started okay. practicing animal Reiki, as opposed to like the the documented um, evidence we have of when when Reiki started in in Japan by uh, Dr. Mikao Usui. Um, so I think it's it's been like a progression, a natural progression from animals to humans. Yeah. You know how you say it, some people might think it's woo-woo that you can look at a picture and like, I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm completely with you. I did I did a, a brief practice on energy healing um, from my spiritual church many years ago. Um, and there is, there's a very large trust that needs to be had with energy yeah. healing. and. Yeah. I think in the physical plane, we have boundaries, we have physical structures that can, if we don't kind of get over that, then all these practices, not just Reiki, but all these meditative practices, everything energy-based, like, it doesn't stand a chance. Mm. Like, because we're so enthralled within this physical world, um, and there is, yeah, I'm completely with you, and I've heard the whole woo-woo thing before um (laughs) but that's why we talk about it as part of the podcast and i think it's really important when i do talk about the spirituality side of it that there's so many aspects to it but faith plays a huge part and you have to have the faith just like in any other religion if you don't have the faith you don't stand a chance yeah and that's that's one of the key things when talking about spiritual energy healing and practice so i'm completely with you when you say some people might think it's woo woo, but that's why we believe in it, <laughs> and some yeah. people don't. <laughs> Each to their own. That's completely fine. So when it comes to animal, then it I know it can be beneficial for all kinds of animals: dogs, cats, horses, even farm animals. Um, if if they need it as well, and like you mentioned, it helps a variety of issues: physical, emotional, behavioral, and end of life care. You did mention it's non invasive and. It's, it can be used alongside veterinary care, which is brilliant. Um, so what does a traditional Reiki, whether it's human or animal, what does it consist of from maybe if you say an hour? Like, what does, that, what does it consist of when you do it? What, how do you structure that to get the most for your client, human or animal? <laughs> for the animal, I use a picture. Okay. So I asked the owner to send me a picture. I normally send them a message to, like 10 minutes before I start to say I'm, I'm about to start the treatment. Yeah. Um, a lot of them kind of ask, oh, what, what do I need to do? Do I need to get them to lie down? And it's like, no, because they can just go out. They can go about to do their own thing. You know, they don't need to do anything while I send the Reiki. Yeah. Um, what I start with is connecting with the animals. So I, I tend to say their name while I place my hands in the picture. Um, with my Reiki, I also use crystals. So I tend to use uh, chakra crystals on the picture because combining the frequency of the crystals with the energy of Reiki, I find is quite a, a powerful um, energy to send. I draw Reiki symbols, not physically draw, but I use my, I use my hand to, draw, to kind of draw the symbols on the picture. Um, with distance Reiki, there are symbols that you can use, yeah. depending on what the owner have have told me about their animal. Um, I usually check if there's like, are there any specific areas they'd like me to focus on? Um, are they, you know, do, are they having any medication? So anything like that, I kind of need to know beforehand. Yeah. So then. I know like if I should focus on one area more than others. All I do is I start moving my hands. I kind of work my way through the chakra points first because um, that kind of aligns the chakras in the animal's body. So if there are any blockages, I, I usually sense it because my hands go really, really warm when I pass that area. So for example, if you know, if the animal has a cough or anything like that, then I know, like, okay, I need to focus on the throat. Um, if there's, like, with, with other animals, I did, I treated one who had arthritis in, in the lower back. 
so then that means like I can focus more on on the sacral and root chakra because that links with that area of the body but as I move my hands I can sense like where I need to go and I tend to spend longer on those areas and I'll and usually finish moving my hands across like all the chakra points again animals like humans can refuse reiki yeah um because not everyone believes in it and not everyone wants it and which is fine because you know reiki isn't going to kind of go oh i can't go there <laughs> because energy doesn't do that yeah <laughs> so it it just it just means that if they refuse it they don't want it it'll just be returned to me yeah so i will i will receive the reiki myself um i haven't en- encountered anyone yet that haven't wanted it um most of the uh, clients that i've spoken to you know the owners that want to they want to give reiki to want me to give reiki to the pets or they want to try it for themselves um normally i find like i've I've had some that want to kind of combine it so i've done a combined session for the owner and the, and the animal um i believe it's isn't it um going to be easier for humans to retract it because of yeah. that whole boundary thing animals don't oh, yeah animals are so much more attuned to nature that yeah you, but you can sense you okay. can sense it though because it's um i can like if my hands go cold it's like oh okay that they, they don't they don't want it there um but usually i mean that's i think that's happened once yeah out of out of all all of the sessions they may say, "Oh yeah, I want to try it," but then they kind of go up oh, here. They it's don't, like, oh, it's yeah, work. it's like a blocking. Yeah, yeah, it's they kind of put barriers down. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've that seen that in psychic practice as well when I've been doing mm. readings. Like you just can't get past to do the reading. You just yeah, th- there's just a brick wall, well, yeah. brick wall, and you well, just yeah. you can't get you can't go to where you need to go in order to to do the reading. Mm. Yeah, I've I've had that. So tell us a bit about your YouTube meditations then. You say it's relatively new. Um, when did you start? How many have you done? What's your meditations? Tell us all about it. Um, I have, um, I've got, I think I've got about three guided um, hypnosis sessions on there. Um, I've got one that deals with, um, that's a, like a deep guided hypnosis. Okay. Like a deeply guided relaxation hypnosis. I've got one that's for confidence, and I've got um, one that kind of deals with like your self-image and you know how you may may want to see yourself. Mm-hmm. So those are like the the hypnotherapy sessions, um, and I've got one one meditation that I've added this week, which is um, to meet your animal spirit guide. You heard it here first. Um, <laughs> it's released. <laughs> yes. So, uh, and my YouTube channel is called Tranquil Mind Healer. Tranquil Mind Healer. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah, and I will be adding more as I go along because, like I said, it is very recent. Um, I kind of had a had a brainstorming session with myself and thought, oh, yeah, that, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, yeah. No, it definitely so is. There, there, will, there will be more things added to that. Um, as we go along um, and it's like we were talking just for anyone who isn't here we were talking just before we started recording about the creative side and when it hits you it's really important just to make sure you do it yeah. It, yeah. it might take a bit of time but just make sure you do it because <laughs> it might not get done otherwise life gets in the way like and it's just important that when it hits you I'm going to do that like you say have a word with yourself yeah. brainstorm with yourself to get yeah. things done so have you got a website for your hypnotherapy and your reiki is it the same one uh you can find me on facebook if you just search for me on facebook um it's on my personal profile okay um i have a i have a pin post with all my offers so that includes all, all the reiki ones i offer as well as the hypnotherapy and you will see my facebook banner it will have um an evolve therapies on there um Enival is the Cornish name for animal. Amazing. And uh yeah, which is why I opted for that. You can also email 
um, any of our therapies at gmail.com if you have any questions. And can you just spell any of all just? Yeah, um, that's. I'm Scottish. <laughs> I'm Doric originally. I don't speak English. <laughs> I don't speak Cornish. It... <laughs> so any of all is spelled E N E V A L. Any of all therapies. So that's one word. Any of all therapies at gmail.com. Spot on. Well, Anne, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. It has been amazing to chat with you about everything. Um, and thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Mamwa, Middle-Aged Man with an Attitude. Don't forget to also subscribe to this podcast. Stay tuned for future episodes and follow us on Facebook at Gordy Camp TV and at Gordy Camp on Instagram and threads. Stay active, stay positive and keep moving towards a healthier and happier you and your fur babies. Thanks, guys. Take care.